What's going on everyone? Greg Ferris back here at Ferris for Fitness and today I have a Q&A I wanted to answer from Adrian Lopez about reverse dieting and refeeds. Uh, I don't think I've ever discussed refeeds on my channel before, not really in depth. I've gotten a lot of questions about them. I probably will do a video sometime or several videos because it's pretty complicated but uh, if, you, if you don't know anything about refeeds, essentially what refeed is is a really transient increase in carbohydrate. A lot of people like to have their cheat days or whatever, but um, there's actually just some some merit behind refeed days. You know, just really transient increase in carbohydrates. So usually you, um, used during cutting. So say if a person did 200 grams of carbohydrate on their low days, and then be once a week they're at like 300, 350. So it's just a, a really transient, a one day, um, maybe maybe twice a week for some people. Uh, increase in carbohydrate, not not necessarily, not even necessarily calories, because some people will bring their fat down and their protein down to um, compensate for that, but other people don't. Uh, but you'll you'll add those those carbohydrate, and essentially what you're trying to do is kind of babysit your metabolism, so that once you're getting to that tail end of your set point for whatever it is, the the easier it is to lose those extra pounds, those last bit of that last bit of fat. Um, so it's really a, popular for people doing like contest prep or things like that because you're trying to get to the essential body fat levels and that's when it becomes incredibly hard. So for most people I don't even talk to about refeeds because 99% of people are never going to need a refeed unless you're getting below like 10%, maybe 12%. You don't even need to really think about it. Think about it, well, um, like a linear intake will probably be fine. Maybe even like an on and off day. So like the days you train have a carb intake and then drop them a little bit on your non-training days. Something like that will work for a majority of people, so I don't think refeeds are incredibly important to talk about for the general population. Um, essentially what you're doing is um, having that high carbohydrate day, there's a lot of speculation on the mechanism behind it. It could be increasing leptin, which is a hunger hormone. Um, it, it could be an increase in, in NEAT, so your, your daily activity, you know, when you're cutting, you're usually kind of mosing around, things like that. So having a high day can kind of just, you know, get you moving a little bit more. So maybe that can get you leaner. Um, it can fill out glycogen if you're like glycogen depleted. Uh, I'm trying to think of some other, um, you know, it could be just incredibly psychological too, you know, having that diet break in a sense. So if you're on a, a really low level of carbs and you're restricting your food intake, you know, even if you're doing something like flexible dieting, there comes to a point where your food intake is restricted. You can kind of have those high days. You could fit in maybe like the frozen yogurts and the a little bit more sweet potato, whatever your whatever your favorite food is. Um, so that's kind of the uh, refeed 101, if you will. Really simply increasing carbohydrate. Uh, I'm not going to speculate in the mechanism, but it seems to get people leaner or without them, or if if they can if they can get lean without them, they are. They're, they're getting that same level of leanness at a higher caloric intake. So without those refeeds, they may have to go down to 100 carbs, but with those refeeds, they can get to that same level, like 150, 175, something like that. So mainly for people who compete, though. Just want to make that clear. So his question, though, to get to this really quickly, um, so on a reverse diet, do you still add refeeds if you haven't reached maintenance yet. So a reverse diet essentially is adding calories back in after you went through a fat loss phase or a cutting phase, whatever you want to call it. So uh, just like you do, so say if you start at 3,000 calories, I don't recommend people drop down to 1,800. I recommend you kind of slowly do it. You know, it really depends on the length. You know, the, the longer you're going to lose fat for, the smaller adjustments you need to make and then vice versa. If you're going like on a two or three week mini cut, you can probably drop down pretty dramatically because you're not going to see that metabolic slowdown. But um, if you're adding calories back in on a reverse diet, so say he went on a pretty long diet, adding calories back in, so maybe it's even like 10 carbs a week, and so he's trying to minimize that fat gain because at the end of a diet, your metabolism, your metabolism is usually pretty slow, um, so you really have to put that fat back on. So you want to slowly increase that. If you do it properly, you can get your levels up um, even higher than they were. Um, before you start your fat loss, like that's that's like how I've done it. Uh, I'm maintaining like 163 right now at the same level of calories I was like 183 before I prepped. So about 20 20 pounds lighter with pretty much the same caloric intake. So that if you do it properly, that a reverse diet is really good. Um, and his question was, 
do we, does he still need to have refeeds when he's below maintenance? And the reason why I really want to answer this question on video is because maintenance is not something that people think they know their maintenance calories, um, but especially when you're cutting, your maintenance is kind of out the window. Like you, it, the target moves in a sense. So uh, say you thought your maintenance was 2,500. So say if you were at your bulking at like 3,000 calories, you thought your maintenance was like 2,500. So you drop down like 2,300. You know, the longer and longer you prep for, that maintenance is going to drop. So your maintenance at the end of a long fat loss phase is not the same it was, you know, when you're fluffy at 15, 20% body fat. So get, getting to the, the question with, if you haven't reached maintenance yet, it's hard to tell what maintenance truly is. If you're go, I, like I'm saying, you're, you shouldn't go off that previous number, especially if you've lost a lot of weight. The way I would do refeeds, again, if I would only do refeeds in the first place if I was below like 10%, um, but a simple way to, if you are using refeeds and talking about using that maintenance, uh, I would just scratch that those maintenance levels. Um, look at what your low days were. So say for instance, your low days are 200 grams of carbs and your high days are, say if you have a, a pretty high high day, so like 350. Once you get to probably about 80, uh, so I would just, I would keep that, that refeed in. So say you refeed every Sunday and then slowly increase, don't increase the refeed days just increase the normal days. So increase your normal days by 20 grams of carbs your, your first week coming out, see how you react and so forth and so forth. And once your um, normal days get within about 50 grams of those high days, just scratch your high day and go with linear intake. So for you, for, for the example I gave, once that person kind of babysit his metabolism up on his reverse diet, once you got to about 300 level grams of carbs, I would just scratch that refeed altogether. And you could probably even do it sooner than that, but that's kind of, um, I would say even maybe 50%. So maybe like 275 for that person. Once you're like, that, that difference between your, your high days and your low days, once you're like 50%, you could probably get rid of it because um, raising those, you should wanna raise those normal days pretty pretty slowly, depending on how you're, you're gaining. Um, and again, that, that high day can kind of have some, some benefits with, you know, leptin and also, you know, maybe filling you out. And just like I said, psychologically with food choices and things like that. So if you are using it, I wouldn't just scratch it all together. Um, but I would just kind of uh, babysit myself up. So babysit up to like 275 in that case, a max of like 300. And definitely once you're at 300, just scratch that, that high day all together and just go with a linear intake. Like I said, if some people prefer the... Um, on day, off day, but I really don't think, like I said, refeeds are for majority of people just overthinking it in my opinion. Um, unless you're trying to get really, really lean, I just wouldn't think about them. For most people, I would say a linear intake is going to be number one, and if not a linear intake, um, working with an on and off day carb carbohydrate intake. So that's my answer to you, Adrian Lopez. Um, thank you for the question, by the way. I love answering questions. You know, I, I get, I most of, them, most of the time I just um, answer them in the inbox or whatever because they're quicker that way but I like to do these videos too because a lot of people have the same questions so they're helpful and it also kind of helps me um, it allows me to really articulate the, the concepts behind things so I can understand things better as well so thank you for the question Adrian hopefully I helped you out if you guys have any of your questions feel free to if you want a specific video make sure to a comment below hit me up on my Facebook page Ferris for Fitness and that's it for now, guys. Until then, take care.